there is a battle. It's an ancient battle. Some people would frame it as a battle between good and evil or light and dark originally perceived as good and evil. Ultimately, light and dark are, are simply energies until we give them the significance that we give to them. But there isn't an ancient battle playing out. But it's not an obsolete battle. It's playing out before our very eyes today. And it sets the context for every event that is unfolding in our world. And so this is a perfect place to begin. We all know there's a battle for our thoughts. That's obvious. If you watch any network news, uh, we've got commentators trying to tell us what to think and how to think and how to perceive the events in, in our lives. Most people know that. There's a battle for our beliefs. It's been playing out for a while in mainstream classrooms, mainstream textbooks. For example, how did the universe begin? Is it a conscious and intelligent beginning or is it an inner, dead, random process that, that we're living in? How did we begin? And we'll talk about this. Are we the product of random mutations and lucky biology as, uh, as we're led to believe? Is there something else going on there? Those things are important, but they're all part of an even deeper battle. There is a battle for our very humanness that is unfolding right now. And that the humanness is the vehicle that allows an even deeper experience, Andre. And that experience for any of our viewers that may wonder how relevant this conversation really is, there's something deep within each of us that is so powerful, so precious, so sacred, so beautiful, that nations will go to war with other nations to keep us distracted so that we don't know what this power is all about. Armies will defeat armies. Pandemics will be unleashed. We will see the collapse of societies. We will see the collapse of financial systems, all in an effort to keep us distracted from the sacredness of this power within us. So I'm, I'm going to use a word and then we'll define it. It is the power of human divinity that is only possible through the biological body. And this is one of the reasons there's such a, a move to replace our biology with synthetics and artificial intelligence. So the word is, is divinity, it is divine, our divine nature. Now, when I use that word in public audiences, many people assume it has something to do with religion, and I can see why, because there are schools for divinity where religion is, is taught. But if you look at the definition of divinity, it, it, it's a deceptively simple definition, and it simply says that divinity is the power within us to transcend perceived limitations, and that's it. So I can see where religion would be wrapped around that concept, the, the idea to transcend perceived limitations. So I'm going to break this down just, just a little bit. The idea of transcendence, it means not just to survive, but to become greater than, to become more than whatever it is that, that life brings to our doorstep, the challenge that life brings to our doorstep. So our ability to transcend perceived limitations they may not even be real. They are the limitations that we have placed upon ourselves through our culture and our society, through our textbooks, through false science, through our culture, our, uh, again, our religion. But they may not even be real. So our divinity is the ability to become more than the worst challenges that life brings to our, our doorstep. The reason it is such a powerful force within us is because through our divinity, among the things we transcend is fear. Divinity is what empowers us to transcend our own fears. If we as individuals and as a society are not kept in fear, we are very, very difficult to control because without the fear, we have the freedom to love, create, innovate, express. These are all features of of divinity. I just want to give some examples of, of what divinity is all about because for, for some people it's this, this esoteric concept. Everyday divinity, we express it every day in our lives. I had the opportunity in uh, 2016, went to the, the Grammy Music Awards and the 
they held them in New York that year. My wife is a voting member in the, the Grammys, and she invited me, and I said yes. It's very kind of her. It was very kind, <laughs> and, um, and I took advantage of the opportunity, and, and I met amazing people there. And every opportunity I had, I would ask the, the musicians and the producers, I would say, when you wrote this amazing piece of music or when the, the words for this song came through, can you tell me wh where did they come from? And every one of them, Andre, every one to the teeth gave me the same answer. Everyone said, it did not come from me. It came through me, from somewhere else. Every one of them said they had to find a way to get out of the way, to allow this deep inspiration to come through them. That is a familiar facet of, of divinity. Artists say the same thing. If you talk to an artist, you know, who's done an amazing, or a sculptor, uh, or a poet, I mean, they say the same thing as a writer. Uh, I have had this experience where I don't know what I'm going to write, and I sit down and give myself the opportunity of either a blank piece of paper or now it's a, a blank computer screen, and become very empty so that I can become very full of whatever it is that's going to come through. These are, are expressions of, of divinity. Divinity is a part of us. Our, our divinity is the part of us that's ancient, it's timeless, it's ageless. Uh, it is where our, our creativity, our intuition, our imagination comes from. And it's what sets us apart from every other form of life. And as we get in deeper into the biology of how it works, we can only access our divinity through our bodies, through the DNA antenna of our bodies and the cellular structure of our bodies. There is a movement to replace our bodies, the transhuman movement, to replace our bodies with synthetics, with chemicals in the blood, sensors under the skin, computer chips in the brain, artificial intelligence. And by virtue of doing so, it steals from us our ability to access this part of us, our divinity. So what we're seeing playing out in the world today, whether you're looking at Ukraine and Russia and the role of America, or you're looking at the Middle East, you're looking at Israel and the Palestinian uh, tragedy that is the horrors that are, are happening there. And you look at everything happening all around that. People tend to think these are isolated, spontaneous events. And people say to me, wow, you know, isn't it amazing all these things are happening right now? They're happening now because the battle for our divinity has intensified to such a degree uh, that these are the events that it takes to keep us from that inner focus. Now, I'm not saying that everyone, every politician, every leader of every nation certainly is aware of what I'm saying. Many of them are pawns in this ancient battle of good and evil, of, of light and dark. They don't even know that they're pawns because they're so wrapped up in the bubble of the level that they are playing this, this very dark game within. But when you begin to step back and you look at the big picture, uh, the evidence supports the story and it's very clear that this, this battle is playing out. And the interesting thing to me, when, when you use the term battle, it's probably no longer even a good word because in battle, it implies conflict. I believe that we now are at a point in our lives and our consciousness where we have the ability and the awareness to transcend. This is our divinity. If you don't engage in the battle, if you transcend the battle, then that is how not win, but triumph. We, when we talk about winning and losing, we're stuck in that old paradigm. We don't want to win or lose. We want to triumph, to become more than. And the way that we do this is so interesting to me, is by living the best version of our lives, living the best version of ourselves, fully expressing, perhaps for the first time in human history, what it actually means to be human. And Andre, what the science is telling us is we don't even know what it means to be fully human because we've never expressed the depth and the breadth of our complete humanness. So as we move through this time in history, there are some that allow themselves to, to become engaged in the distractions and the diversions, and others who are recognizing it's not that we discount 
what's happening. And not that we say it's not important, it's all important. But there is uh, a science, there is a skill, and there is an art to rising above living, becoming the best version of ourselves, and in that way, doing just what the definition of divinity says, transcend our perceived limitations. So I'd like to, to say this to set the context. Everything we're seeing in our lives today, even the things that so many of my friends, the social justice things that, that are important and they're really wrapped up in, uh, for example, in the United States, the pronoun conversation, what pronouns are we using, the transgender conversation, abortion conversation, gay rights conversation, and all these are important, but if you look closely at what's happening, the races, black against white, Christian against Muslim, um, Jew against Muslim, the rich against the poor, these are all really important conversations that go right to the gut, man. They cut right to the core of our most primal instincts and if we don't know how we are being engaged, then we will respond on that primal level. They're important conversations. They have been skillfully weaponized to divide us and keep us separate from one another, to break the social bonds that have always kept families and communities and societies and nations together. There's an intentional effort to break those bonds, and sadly, it, it appears to be working well to some degree, because we're allowing it. We're allowing ourselves to be played, to be pawns in this ancient game. So the conversations are important, and I don't want to diminish the significance of those conversations. It's also important to recognize that the topics have been weaponized, and rather than having conversations in kindness to become closer as brothers and sisters in the global family, the differences that we used to celebrate as our strength have now become the differences that are being used, being weaponized to divide us uh, and keep us in our fear. And it is divinity that allows us to transcend that fear. So when you think about this, all of a sudden it becomes really clear why a dark power would want to keep us in that fear because we become powerless victims in that fear. And as victims, we need a savior. And technology is now being touted as our savior. We're being told that we are flawed as humans by virtue of our existence. Emotion is one of our flaws. Um, the ability to, the inability to, to make clear logical decisions without having emotion, empathy, is considered to be a flaw by transhumanists. Sickness, illness, death is considered to be a flaw by transhumanists. And we are programming our young people to believe that they are broken and flawed from the time of birth and that they are victims of something beyond their control. And if you're a victim, you need a savior. And the savior, we're being told, is technology. Computer chips in the brain, artificial intelligence, sensors under the skin, AI that knows us better than we know ourselves. And uh, when you begin to understand the, the big picture, and I'm covering a lot of ground here intentionally because we'll tie into this. When you begin to understand the big picture, all of a sudden, the power of human divinity becomes something more than a casual academic peripheral conversation. It's front and center for everything that's happening in our lives today. And the beauty is you don't have to know that. But you can simply live the best version of yourself and transcend the efforts to keep us small and separate and insignificant.